You are sent to destroy a weapon that the enemy, the Settlement Defense Front, or the SDF are holding. With most Call of Duty campaigns doing the whole run and gun thing, and I mean, this game is no exception, but with the beautiful backdrop and the cool gadgets, and I don't know, the fact that this game has a boss fight? I mean, what other Call of Duty has a boss fight in the campaign? And of course, you know, the mission ends with uh, you destroying the weapon, and then getting hit by one of your teammates send you flying outside. You wake up to your character losing oxygen. Oh wait, who are these guys? It turns out that this this is the main bad guy, Admiral Selen Koch, or Jon Snow from that TV show that fell off. He then tells you that this moon isn't yours anymore, shoots one of his men, and then orders for your immediate execution. Also, wait, 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 is that Conor McGregor? It turns out that this was all a video recording being viewed by Lieutenant Reyes and Admiral Reigns. They then discuss the situation at hand, with Lieutenant Reyes suggesting a full attack on the SDF. But of course, Admiral Reigns just says, nah, not Chief, not now. We'll get them later. After talking to the Admiral, we meet Lieutenant Nora Salter. Salter is a tough and loyal and sarcastic pilot who always has raises back. The detail in the environment is one of my personal favorite things in the game. I mean, just look at it. The celebration scene alone has more details than past Call of Duties combined. I mean, look at these NPCs. They're just talking to each other. And look at the ships that are passing by. And dude, you can see the whole city. After admiring this beautiful view, we then meet another important character, E3N, or Ethan, a robot who serves as Ray's sidekick and comedic relief, who has a human-like personality and sense of humor. You got feelings, Ethan? I do, Lieutenant. I do. I carry the brain of a human farmer. Holy shit, are you serious? No, man. Not at all. <laughs> Moments after meeting Ethan, you get attacked by your own AT guns. Basically, the AT guns are Earth's Iron Dome, and most cities have them, including the one you're in. After crashing, you fight your way through the city, with civilians getting shot by the SDF. After literally being born just 10 minutes ago, Ethan begins to see the effects of war. You find out that the reason for the attack was because of a spy that had infiltrated the UNSA, or the United Nations Space Alliance. Oh wait, I don't think I mentioned them. They're basically the people you work for. The spy gets found, and it turns out out that this was meant to be a full-scale attack on earth so to prevent that of course you get on your jet baby and you head to space this is one of the best parts i think of this game it is i mean they do kind of repeat it in a way but i do like the whole space fighting it reminds me of like star wars like you, you actually have a whole dog fight and then of course after absolutely mogging the sdf it turns out that the captain of the retribution the biggest ship in the fleet had died during the attack you the second in command are the new captain and with that you get a whole new batch of characters sergeant omar commander of the marines todd kashima marine serving under sergeant omar gator the navigation expert the game really makes you feel like the captain of this ship it also makes you care for the people around you become attached to your new crew so one of them dies it hits you The next mission is set on Earth's moon. The crew and you need to take back the lunar terminal from the SDF to rebuild your fleet from the attacks that happened on Earth. You go around killing your typical bad guys and one of them almost kills you with a jet and you get flung outside cracking your, you know, your helmet in the process. Ah, but no biggie, right? You know, you start panicking. Luckily, your boy Ethan's there to save you. You get ready to attack them the same way they attacked you. After clapping their entire fleet that was around the moon, you get a video from Koch explaining that they won't stop until they take our world. The next mission is to take down fuel towers from the SDF. With no fuel, they can't conquer. This is some cool thing about this campaign. We also get some good character development amongst the crew. It's mainly between Sergeant Omar and Ethan. When first meeting Omar, he is really passive aggressive towards Ethan. I'm a drone. Captain's orders that sorry. And it's Bob, not drone, but deserving attempted humor, sir. Don't call me, sir. I'll work for a living. Check your bot, Captain, before I throw him out of the airlock. See what those things can do. But after the moon mission, Sergeant Omar actually becomes really fond of Ethan and has a deep respect for him. As far as Ethan goes, I will personally vouch for this stiff metal motherfucker. He's one of us. Ethan, what's the Navy's official policy for a gunfight? 
Send in the Marine! <laughs> As for you, Captain! You alright, Kashima? Oh, a little dizzy, start. The mission for the most part is played out stealthily, taking out enemies in the dark of one of Saturn's moons, Titan. You reach a perfect landing zone and wait for what I like to call like a cooler version of Ethan. That sounds funny. After mowing down the enemies, the big boy gets into a Pokemon battle where, I mean, it loses for some reason. Your robot loses to another robot somehow. The enemy robot starts attacking you with everything it has. You take out a rock launcher and then begin shooting its arms, its legs. You end up jumping on top of it and landing the final blow. And oh, what you look at that. It turns out your big guy, your big boy, was just taking a nap. You, you know, it's fine. Bro was just sleeping. After seeing that your big boy was taking a nap, we move forward to an area of operation, waiting for air support. In the distance, you can hear the roar of a ship approaching. Suddenly, it gets sent to the ground. It turns out the ship approaching is the Olympus, the biggest ship that the SDF has. Ethan comes to your aid, picking you up, and the race to get to safety begins. It seems that Koch is on the ship and orders you to surrender for your immediate execution, just like earlier in the game. You then respond with the best response in this situation. We don't die on our fucking knees, not here or anywhere else. After you respond to whatever Koch said, the crew gets into an argument between waiting for air support or taking on the Olympus head on, or to continue destroying the fuel towers. Luckily for us, we end up getting all three options. Air support comes just in time. Another dogfight starts with you and the SDF. We then take out all the enemy aircrafts and take out the fuel towers. And it turns out our ship lost the Olympus in the clouds. Oh wow, the retribution. It lost the Olympus. <laughs> Let's go. And I mean, hey. The only thing left to, to do is just go home. Wait, wait, wait what, what is that? Is, is that the Olympus? You get trickshot and making you lose control. After a couple of seconds, you gain control back and start heading straight towards the man that attacked Earth. The man responsible for millions of deaths. Ethan keeps on telling you that ejecting is the best option right here, but you are sure that you can get both of you guys on the ship. As the jet starts to fail from all the damage, Ethan takes control of the situation and ejects both of you moments before impact. It is here where my favorite scene in the whole game happens. Let me just show you. Captain, your suit. Took a hit in the cockpit. Left arm's torn. Unsettling report, sir. Oxygen Captain, I can't stop it. What do I do? Let it go, Ethan. I can't, sir. You're my commanding officer, Captain. My mission is you. Who says? Oh, I'm hardware, sir. Ultimately expendable. Oh, no. You're my brother, Ethan. You're talking robot, brother. Affirmative. Yes. Well, I am the handsome one, sir. <laughs> no doubt. Looks like this is the end of the line, partner. I think I'm scared, sir. Me too. Captain, stay with me. Sir. After the scene fades to black, you wake up alive on the ship of Captain Farron. She describes that they had to pry Ethan's arms open. They had frozen around you, protecting his captain to the end. After getting back to the ship, Reyes and Salter share a moment. Salt, I heard what you... You ready? Always. Your crew's waiting for you, Captain. The next mission we are informed about the loss of communication with the Vesta 3 mining colony located on an asteroid in the Mercury Cluster. However, we soon discover that the, the asteroid was knocked off course and is now drifting just outside of the sun's orbit. After working our way in the living quarters, we discover that the staff were slaughtered by their own security drones and the ambient changes to a kind of horror-esque setting. The team goes to a locked door outside of the control center. After it opens, the group moves inside. We discover the surviving miners that are located within the mines of the 
landing pad with this information reyes ordered salter to ready up the transportation the miners then inform us that the scf olympus had opened fire on the asteroid which caused it to be knocked out of orbit with the miners secured they proceed to open up the landing pad holding out against all the drones until salter arrives the team and the rest go towards the ship but an explosion knocks on reyes and a few miners omar then hands reyes a gun to cover them while they board the ship after getting reyes on the ship omar goes to help the last remaining surviving miner but he is knocked down by another explosion while reyes refuses to leave omar behind omar tells the group that the mission comes first and to leave him as the ship leaves the crumbling asteroid and several more explosions destroy the rest of the facility we then get a scene where reyes he feels guilty in this scene he feels like he could have done more just a few more seconds was enough to save him in his head but with most things things happen fast we left him Gorbo. there's nothing you could do captain i gave you a direct order I'm the pilot of this ship. It's my job to make sure that we get back. We lift off on my order. We shouldn't have been down there in the first place. That's not your call. Mission comes first. Omar's words, not mine. I bring my men home, so we do both. Captain, he goes willingly. He didn't have to, Corporal. Two seconds, Saul. All I needed was two more seconds. After the mission where, sadly, Omar had passed away, we then go back to Geneva, where the first attack on Earth happened. The plan is to lure the Olympus to Geneva with the transponder from the SDF operative, or the spy. I'm gonna be calling him the spy because uh, we call him an operative, uh, not my style. Once the device is destroyed, it will send a signal to the SDF and the Olympus telling them that Earth's defenses are down. But of course, they won't be, at least. At least that's what we think. After a cutscene, it turns out that the convoy that had the SDF spy and the transponder had gotten attacked by the SDF. As you drop down and look around you, you see the city war torn. You see the city in shambles, a shadow of its former self. When approaching the convoy, you find that you find the major that was, that was doing the escort, badly wounded. He tells you that the spy had escaped. And like Ray's puts it, if he gets to a terminal and kills a transponder, they're cooked. It's 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 over. And then you get a new objective. Find the freaking traitor, aka the spy, to the city and potentially capture or kill him. After going through the damn city, killing every enemy in sight, you get up to a ladder and you're like, oh wow. You go up a ladder and, and realize it's it's daytime. Oh wow. Let me just look up let me just open this door and oh what the after waking up from being unconscious you look up and see the spy detonating explosions that destroy your at guns now earth's defense are gone and so is the transponder you then look up again and see the olympus approaching passing right on top of you after seeing the olympus from a distance you can tell things are not gonna get good it's not looking good bruv it then proceeds to commit the biggest war crime ever they kill your admiral right there and then with our admiral dead the only thing left to do is to attack the olympus and capture or kill Koch. after landing on the ship you notice one small cool detail that i mean i didn't notice when i first played it but there are more enemies on the ship funny enough than there are when you just you know go around on the city fighting them which i mean it's a small detail which makes sense because there's it's their ship there should be more people there makes sense and at the same time you get another mini boss fight that ends pretty easily considering you've done multiple of these after the mini boss fight you enter a room where you get a video transmission from Koch. it's just him basically just yapping about he, how he's gonna blow up the olympus and level this place down with us inside you know typical bad guy stuff following that you do more killing and eventually get to the room where Koch is and you do what every other call of duty character would do in this situation and you know just hack one of his worker drones and then beat the living crap out of him repeatedly by the way Ray's was uh, not not having that you lack what it takes to win this war i had what it took to beat you Koch. killing me isn't winning i killed your admiral your eyes shut up bitch <laughs> oh my god <laughs> And 
then the mission after that, we stand on business. No time wasted. We put the Olympus to good use and attack the rest of the SDF fleet that was above Mars. Of course, the remaining surviving ships began attacking you, so you asked for backup. When the retribution arrives, the Olympus had already taken a lot of damage. And if you don't know, the ship is needed to destroy the shipyard. Shipyard is responsible for basically every ship that has come out of the SDF's ass and that has attacked Earth and, and its colonies. So yeah, we need the Olympus to destroy that. But unfortunately, in the heat of battle, both ships, the Retribution and the Olympus and your jet are deeply damaged. And then of course, you know, as you expect, both Retribution and the Olympus end up colliding with each other, head straight towards Mars. After the impact, you wake up in the aftermath of the collision. You see in the distance, the Retribution falling down from the sky on board your whole crew. After that, you see the Olympus falling down with Ethan inside. Following the events amidst the aftermath, you encounter surviving marines alongside casualties, among whom lies Todd Kashima, who was hurt badly. Sorry, sir. Always have a beautiful year. Don't worry, Cash. I got gotcha. you. I'm probably gonna purple heart for this, huh? I don't impress the lieutenant. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure will. I can, I can still fight. I know you can, Marine. We're gonna get you back out there in no time. Brooks, where's that man kid? Let's go! Is that Marine, sir? Kashima ends up dying his blood on your hands. After that, the only thing remaining is to find the rest of your crew. Upon reaching the crash site of the retribution, you encounter the remainder of your surviving crew. A new objective emerges to reach the ship tower and obliterate it by any means necessary. And of course, how would you do that? You don't, it isn't like you have this super intelligent robot that can just, you know, I don't know, bring a freaking army of drones. Yeah, suddenly Ethan emerges, the goat himself, with the whole entire army of robots that he had gotten from the Olympus. You see, this is why this guy's the goat. And then, of course, the next time we catch sight of the crew, they're aboard a vessel. In this moment, Reyes delivers one of the hardest quotes in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we do not fight here to win. Our battle is so that those we fight for do not lose. There are billions of people back home who don't know what we're doing. But they will know exactly what we've done. Good luck out there. Upon reaching the shipyard, Reyes is adamant about leveling it to the ground using the destroyer. However, the plan encounters one fatal flaw. The payload must be allowed access manually to fire. True to his nature as a good captain, Reyes volunteers without hesitation. As you reach the terminal, Ethan then reveals that the SDF has shut down the switches and locks, requiring assistance to release the mooring. With a sense of unease, you realize that you may need to manually control Ethan. Prepare for the possibility of his shutdown during the process. As you approach the switch, a haunting feeling creeps over you. Fearing that Ethan may not return, a charge is necessary to ignite the core, and Ethan declares that his self-destruction will provide sufficient power. With a heavy heart, Ethan shares his final words with his captain. It'll set off a chain reaction that blow the board. There's gotta be another way. I'm afraid not, sir. Good luck, Rhea. It's been an honor, sir. After Ethan's sacrifice, you issue the command to, to Lieutenant Salter, directing her to fire upon your position. The missile strikes through space, impacting the terminal, creating a breach. Despite your efforts to cling onto the structures, the force of the explosion propels your body outwards into the vast emptiness of space. Amidst the chaos and destruction surrounding you, maintaining composure becomes increasingly difficult, knowing that this time you won't make it back. Thank you.